divine healing since, since the beginning of the year and we want to really focus on um, some of the key aspects of different ways of receiving healing from God which is part of the promises of God and also of his covenant grace to all of us uh, this afternoon by the grace of God I just want to bring a very short exhortation on faith praise God which is a key ingredient for receiving faith my scripture reading will be Hebrews chapter 11 and we all know very well the scripture is talks about different heroes of faith but you can also be inserted inside praise God this is not for a specific group of people because these people were just ordinary men and women but who believed and trust trusted in God the Bible says in the book of um, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hopeful the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good testimony praise God so it is all by faith and that is also my little inspiration for this uh, afternoon remember faith is the very foundation of all that we need to have in order to walk with God be with God serve God and in fact in verse 6 the Bible says for without faith it is impossible to please God without faith it is impossible to be acceptable to God and the Bible goes on to say they that come to God, so those who come to God, must believe that God is, and He is the rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. What is faith then, in a nutshell? Because a lot of believers and so-called Christians struggle with this very thought on faith. And I myself have struggled for years on having a little understanding of what faith is all about. Now, I had all the scriptures read, as far as I can uh, recall, read all the quotes and all that, praise be to God. As good as all of that was, was amen in, in general, I needed to come to a place where, amen, all the scriptures and the quotes that I knew became real to me personally. It wasn't just about coming to rehearse them verbally but it was a point of seeing them come to pass in a real life in my own life i was at a time in need of physical healing and i really needed god's touch in my life i could see my life come to an end and at an early age i didn't really want to hey man accept it and i was a believer already until i put my foot down and I really wanted to have a real encounter with God. So what I'm explaining or what I'm about to share um, is the reality. It worked for me and I see no reason why it cannot work for you. Praise be to God. In fact, it took me different. In it, uh, This, um, this um, uh, faith work took me to different levels in my personal walk. So what I'm about to share right now is what worked for me. The subject was just about faith, knowing God, understanding or having a basic understanding of faith and putting it to work. Remember, the Bible says here, the uh, faith now, now, so it's not someday, now. The Bible says now, faith is the substance. Of things hoped for and then verse um, verse um, 6 says but without faith it is impossible to please God for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him then the Bible goes on to speak about some heroes of faith by faith Noah by faith Abraham by faith Sarah and we shall come to one of them let me just stop here and then just talk to you about faith what is faith then because this is one key question that we get 
very often from different believers who are going through different things and they start wondering about this very important subject of faith and they go on to ask what is faith what is faith what is faith praise god so the big question is sometimes we don't have a good bible understanding of faith way well we have for some memorized some message course and scriptures and we rehearse them and we think that is it no we make faith sound so difficult so hard to get and yet it is just so simple and i'm gonna show you that it is so simple anybody can get it remember all these people here all the heroes that are outlined in this hebrews 11 chapter were ordinary men and women just normal people praise be to god what is faith well faith is a conviction based on past experiences that's god's new and fresh word will surely be ours it is an a conviction that that is what you have to to, to understand it is a conviction on who god is is knowing that god's a hey man is who he says that he is the two words that will describe who amen faith will be confidence and certainty confidence and certainty those are the two key words that you need to understand on the subject of faith of course we know faith is confidence con conviction but the two words that follow after that that's the, and i've just said here confidence conviction certainty are the two key words on faith and these two qualities require a beginning and the end part the beginning of confidence is knowing the character of god on his word what do i mean knowing what do i mean by knowing the character of god well it is about knowing who God says or who God says he is in his word that is the very important aspect knowing the character of God one of the characters is God is a healer God is love God is a savior God is merciful God is gracious God is helpful those are the characters that we find in God. And these are the characters that he wants to express to us, to his people. So knowing the character, the nature of God is very important in understanding this very key subject on faith. Who God is. That is the foundation. Picture yourself in your image, who you are, you are who you say that you are, and you know yourself better than I do. So picture God as being a healer. Picture God as being a supplier, a provider. And that's what he says cannot be altered, cannot be changed, cannot be modified. That is the beginning part. And the next part would be having faith or confidence in his words so knowing the character of god the attitude the nature of god and having confidence in what he says once you understand these two aspects of faith these two entities essentially that is amen because you can just base your faith your um your journey your walk with god on these two aspects knowing the character of God and knowing his words of promise that's what he says will not be altered and facing any problem you can just tap and claim the promises of God now I'm gonna go now to show you how remember these two words here so what is faith it is conviction and uh, in the character of God and knowing that's when God speaks, it cannot be altered. Praise God. 
that's when we now now when we believe that God will fulfill his promises even though you can't see the materialization of it praise God yet you believe with certainty with faith amen that's even though I don't see it God is still faithful you demonstrate through faith praise God by believing by holding on to his words of promise amen I'm gonna show you a little example of why you have to believe even before you see things be materialized because that is the big mistake that we make we expect to see things happen here and then before believing before receiving things amen and the problem between asking and receiving in between we don't know what is the attitude that we are supposed to have jesus christ amen in saint john chapter 20 the gospel of john chapter 20 listen to this it will help you my brother in saint john chapter 20 verse 24 we know this scripture very well it is about thomas now we know that the message was given that jesus christ was raised from the dead and started to appear to different ones thomas heard it but he doubted he was not convinced that jesus christ was risen even though jesus christ before his death told him all of them that he was going to die he was going to be crucified three days later he was going to rise up again amen but they forgot he personally forgot amen along with other disciples forgot the promises of god the scriptures what he did mention before his death amen his death now he is dead he is risen he appears to them praise god and they were the disciples in a house what happened the bible says verse um, 26 and after eight days his disciples were again inside and thomas with them jesus came the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said peace to you then he said to thomas reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side do not be unbelieving but believing jesus speaking verse 28 and thomas answered and said to him my lord and my god verse 29 jesus said to him thomas because you have seen me you have believed blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed this is a very key statement in the bible from the words of jesus to thomas and to you and to me praise god you are blessed amen by just the believing without even seeing you see so the believing part comes first and the receiving or the seeing part later and it's a very important essential aspect key in the faith walk let's go back now having established this very important scripture let's go back again to hebrews 11 because hebrews 11 will say without faith it is impossible to please god and we have just shown you that you, you don't need to see things be materialized before you before believing because you are fully convicted persuaded that the word of god will work now the bible goes on to speak and outline different faith healers we have abraham we have um, noah but then let's go to verse 11 by faith sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged 
him faithful who had promised. Hallelujah. Now, please keep this in mind because Sarah was the wife of Abraham. She was 90 years old. And at 90 years old, you wouldn't see any normal uh, woman, healthy woman, conceive at 90. Her heart wouldn't bear the weight of childbearing. Her, her heart wouldn't even go through the childbearing experiences, let alone labor. So it was a totally impossible case. But faith is for impossible cases, for difficult cases, for case beyond the natural realm, the natural provision. That's how faith works. Praise God. If you can do it yourself, it's no longer faith. But faith is for things where you and I are unable to do it. And the Bible say the situation was brim. The situation was impossible. The situation was completely, hallelujah, unrealistic. She could not conceive, oh, Abraham, bring forth a child at 100 years old. Oh, and Sarah, in the case of Sarah, at 90. But the Bible say she conceived even when she was past the age. But what made her conceive is because she judged him who God faithful. She considered God to be faithful. He who made the promise. So her faith, amen, was in God. But who was Sarah? To receive the promise in the first place we read in Genesis chapter 18 we find Sarah was not holy she doubted I mean she doubted when the promise of God was presented to her we see in Genesis chapter 18 three angels coming to visit Abraham on their way down to Sodom two of them were, were about to go down there one was the angel of the Lord that's renowned to be the Lord himself. They appeared and Abraham discerned who these people were, these three people were. And he called one of them, my Lord. He invited them for a little break, for a little lunch before they could carry on. And as Abraham went out to get a lamb and informed Sarah to make a little cake for them, and they sat under, mamre, uh, under the oak tree, fellowshipping, something happened. The Bible says, this is very fascinating. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, will shall have a son. Verse 10, Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. And the Bible says, verse 11, now, Abraham and Sarah were old, amen, well advanced in age. And Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also. So she is doubting. She is questioning the ability of God to provide her with the promise. Praise God. But in spite of all of this, listen to the next part. And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child, since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did. But listen to what happened. The Lord saw faith. Amen. When the book of Hebrews, um, book of Hebrew was written, the writer of Hebrew is going to include two women who were two heroes of faith in this chapter one of them was sarah and the other one was uh, rahab the prostitute the two women included in this 
chapter here, praise be to God. But why was Sarah included in here? Even though we've just read she denied. But later on the Bible says she judged him faithful. So faith has nothing to do with your mistakes. Faith has nothing to do with uh, doing good or doing all of that, your righteousness. As much as we want people to be right and live right and walk right, faith has nothing to do with this. Praise God. If you believe, you can receive from God. Amen. And God said here to Abraham, is there anything too difficult for me? And this is where now you need to understand, hallelujah, that faith is personal conviction of who God is and what his word says that he is. That's where you can say things like, of course, when the Bible says, is there anything too hard for God? You can say, make it personal. Is this too hard for him? Is the communication problem I am having too hard for God? Is my health problem too hard for God? Is my cancer too hard for God? Is COVID too hard for God? Is my tumor too hard for God? Is my financial problem too hard for God? Make it personal. Hallelujah, where you insert your faith in it. Faith is not just about hearing. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. But it's not just the hearing. When the Bible says cometh by hearing, hearing by the word, it means hearing by the word that is acted upon. Amen. That is in the original Greek when um, Romans chapter 10 verse 17 was written. The original translation in Greek was faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God acted upon. That's when you act upon your, the word of God. It's not just about hearing it, amen, but it's about acting. That is the difficult part with so many Christians. They hear, they know all the quotes, they've heard it, they've caught it, but when it comes to going into action, putting it to work for you that's where we find most of us fell amen so you need to remind god is my condition too hard for you is my speech impediment too hard for you is my financial problem too hard for you is my lump in the breast too hard for you is the tumor in my colon too hard for you is arthritis too hard for God you claim it you put your name in there you put your case inside you name it praise be to God whatever it is amen if God can't be trusted with our innermost thought and fears we are in greater trouble my brother amen so we need to include ourselves in the promises of God, amen, and declaring them to ourselves. Praise God. Let us put fear aside. If you have fear, put fear aside. Claim the promises of God for yourself. Is my sickness too hard for God? Is there any complication that you are going through? Include that complication in your case. Praise God. Is the communication problem that you have to God, too hard for God. Whatever that you are involved in, in your life, all the nudges you ask, ask His power. Make yourself available by including your name in there. And I tell you, my brother, the power of God will be released in your life. This is my lunchtime exhortation. I will be doing more of this in uh, the next few days around lunchtime. Tune in because God has got something special for you. Again, I am giving you practical, practical uh, tools that you need to apply for your own need. You don't need hands to be laid on you. You literally can become an agent 
for divine healing. God can use your hand to go out and about where you are to be an instrument in his hand, to be a divine healer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing over your life. In the name of Jesus, body begin to function normally in the life of my brother and in the life of my sister right now. I curse the sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Be healed now by the authority of God's word. Acted upon right now. Be healed. Be delivered. Be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. If you need special prayer, email us. Send us a text message. Inbox us. We will be glad to pray for you. And if you live here in England and you need a prayer cloth, we will send you one free of charge. It's a prayer that has been prayed for and it is acting upon the word of God. It will come with all the instructions that you need in order to know how to use it. We are here to declare the word of God. Satan has fooled a lot of churchgoers for too long. It is time that we go back and start acting the word of God and putting it to work because the word of the word of God works. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Share this video. Send it out. It will encourage and be a blessing to a whole lot of people out there. Until I speak to you again tomorrow around this time, God bless you richly. In 